Hello Three, everyone, welcome two, to my new video where I one. explain how I beat Dark Souls blindfolded in around 4 hours total. Now I took the liberty and cut out lots of parts and sped up lots of movement that is unnecessary, but I will explain everything that's going on in this run and especially now in the beginning I will leave everything in so I can explain the techniques and stuff that I use. So we start at the asylum right here. And the first thing that I use to navigate this world blindfolded is the footsteps. Very important part of blindfolded speedrunning this game. Um, the footsteps make very unique sounds in different locations as well. Water does different sounds, concrete does different sound, grass does different sound, etc. So what I use is I just count as like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. Now bonfires are our checkpoints in the run. We kind of want to grab as many bonfires as we can in case we die. And now comes the first boss already as well, the Asylum Demon. We chose specifically the Thief as starting class with the Black Fire Bombs because that allows us to kill this boss early uh, with a particular setup here. As you can see I do like very normalized movement and then one punch into instantly two fire bombs. then I backstep four times, one, two, three, four. And then I throw um, three more fire bombs, and that should be a perfect fight. Really perfect clean. Perfect fight. A perfect fight means that we nice. do not get hit by the demon, and our position does not change, which means that we can directly continue our route without having to go back to the bonfire via the dark sign, which is something you will see later on a lot. So this is just like a tiny time save here. Um, what I also utilize a lot, as you can see right now, is rolls. Um, rolls are very very important because they are normalized, they have a fixed distance and you can count them. I skipped here a bit of the asylum, it's just some movement, but the next interesting part is right here. I'm attempting to break this wall, which you usually need the boulder for, um, with a quit out. So what I do there is I roll, quit out, and during the stand-up animation after the quit out, the wall breaks because Dark Souls has some weird properties. Um, now, we can talk to this guy, get our Estus, which is important, as well as the key. If you kill the boss early, this guy gives you the key to the big door from the boss. So we're gonna do just that and warp back to the bonfire, which is our normalized position. From there, it just runs straight to the door and we are here. Now, we're not done with the tutorial just yet. There's one more thing we need to pick up, which is a soul. Um, there is one soul of a nameless something i think i don't know how exactly it's a very small one so for that we're gonna go here into this corner very precisely set up um some movement and pick up this soul this is a crucial part to the run if we don't pick up the soul most of the things would not work because we will very soon perform a glitch so from here on i'm just gonna go back to where the crow is um count the steps, count some rolls, and then we are in the cutscene and in Firelink <laughs> Shrine. So now I need nice. to explain a very, very important um, glitch that we're going to use throughout the run multiple times, which is um, the item duplication glitch or soul duplication as well. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we picked up that one soul and we're going to dupe that 99 wow. times so that we can level up and buy some stuff at the merchant. What you do for that is right here, open two menus at the same time. It's like frame perfect. And then suddenly I have 20,000 souls. It's not very hard to perform if you know what you do. And the good thing is you can perform it blindfolded very consistently as well. So with these 20,000 souls, which is not that much, but it gives us some chance to give, give us some uh, initial level ups here which is mostly one attunement to have two spell slots, as well as some intelligence. Um, very important is that we keep around 7,000 souls and then make our way to the merchant in New Londo ruins, because there is the weapon that we're going to use throughout the entire run, all, all the way until the end boss. So um, I left this kind of movement here down to New Londo in for now because we're going to do this exact movement like three or five times, three, uh, like multiple times throughout the run. So just that you can see like how I navigate the world a bit. All of the navigation is really footsteps, rolls, um, and then just count a lot in your head. 
you can also see me uh, swing my uh, shield parry basically very often, which is a form of buffering inputs. So um, what that means is I can I can do the animation and then notch my analog stick into a different so notch, for example, up like left, up right. Shaking, dude. Now, so here is another soul of a nameless soldier, and you can, you already guessed it, we're gonna use that as well to give us a lot of souls, but only later. This is uh, prep for later first. Now, here is the merchant that we're gonna buy our weapon from, which is the um, Sorcerer's Catalyst, as well as two spells, the Soul Arrows and the Heavy Soul Arrows. Um, and from here on, we just gonna Dark Sign back to Firelink Shrine. This is just okay, unfo this unfortunately uh, is a uh, routed out like this. We have to go back magic? here to attune our magic first Second? because we cannot actually use the spells until we sit at the bonfire. So we have to warp back, um, equip the arrows, the soul arrow magic, and then we are good to go. So we, we walk all the way back here to this position where we already have been once, and now we go to Valley of Drakes. Now, Valley of Drakes is. Um, how do you say interesting <laughs> so valley of drakes first of all there's a name large soul of a nameless soldier right here in this corner also the reason why we picked thief is literally just to open this door right here this shortcut and here's another form of normalized movement that you can see which is backstepping backstepping also always puts you a certain distance uh, backwards in a normalized manner this bridge here is absolute horrible but I managed to do it first try really cool here. Stupid bridge. Um, very, very finicky to get over there. And then the rest of Valley of Drakes is mostly hugging the wall and walking and counting your footsteps. Here's another interesting technique is I prep a quit out and then listen if I hit the bridge or not. And if I don't hit the bridge, I quit out. And if I hit the bridge, I can just cancel. So we just continue running through Valley of Drakes until we are like around this point where the dragon is, where we pick up another soul that we need. And then we make our way further to the dragon right here. And the reason why we leveled up early and bought all the spells early is literally just for this one dragon right here. Um, this dragon is horrible, but with the specific amount of intelligence that we have and the heavy soul arrows, we can stunlock the dragon here and kill him with eight shots plus one normal soul arrow. And you can see, our um, soul arrow is exactly a tiny bit faster than the lightning breath of the dragon. So we can literally stunlock him and like this defeat him very, very easily. And this dragon gave me lots Clean. of trouble in the past, so I'm very happy we found this strat. After that, we just continue running through uh, Valley of Drakes until we reach the basin bonfire here. The Darkroot Basin bonfire. Also, I don't know if my speeds and compare against... This is a very I'm important part right of now. the run as well. Um, we're going to pick up the most important item of the entire run uh, in a few moments here. First of all, after we get the bonfire, we get the Crescent Grass... No, the, the Grass Crest Shield. Oh my god, how is it called? Grass Crest Shield, yeah. That shield helps you to get stamina. And then we do the go up the basement, the basin, with the kind of similar movement, just counting steps to this position here, where the best item in Dark Souls is. You might not have used this in your life, but it is the longbow. Okay, we got the bow stuff. Um, in blindfolded is like no, the longbow. holy grail. But more to that later. There's first another very important glitch coming up right away. We are gonna wrong warp right now. I'm prepping a dark sign, and then, listen. What are these numbers? So what I essentially do here is frame advance the menu, and my life split is telling me the amount of milliseconds that have passed in game time. So what? how the wrong warp works oh, is shit, you have to quit out uh, without a 4, at the last four frames of the okay, dark yeah, sign. And how visual speedrunner do this is they look at live split <laughs> and the in-game timer um, continues running for four frames before the game actually starts playing again. So if you have okay. eyes, you can just look at your splits the and right then scene. see, okay, the time has changed, but the game <laughs> is still in the loading zone. So hard, then I quit out. 
For blindfolded, I wrote a plugin that reads me the milliseconds so I can listen for the change. And now we are suddenly on top of the basin uh, right here at Andre with the um. blacksmith where the, um, yeah, where we get basically all of our rest equipment that we're going to need. So we picked up uh, three okay, souls so here on the way. So I'm going to do again the same duplication glitch that I did in Firelink Shrine. Um, we first gonna do 99 of the nameless soul, which gives us 80,000 souls. And now it's very important. Before we dupe the other ones, we first buy stuff. So we're gonna buy 25 titanite shard. We're gonna buy the repair box, and 999 large arrows, 999 wooden arrows. And now comes the second part of the glitch. With these 999 arrows in our inventory, we can manipulate the duplication glitch. So we duped 999 instead of 99. So now we just dupe a million souls easily in one second. And then we're going to do it again. And suddenly we have 3 million souls. Or is it 30 million? Even? No, it's 3 million. So then with so many souls, we can upgrade all the equipment that we need, which is mostly the longbow to plus 5. Um, and all of our uh, thief armor to plus 3. And then we need to, it's a bit of a scary part, but we need to walk with these 3 million souls up to the bonfire without getting lost because then the run is dead because we lose the souls. Uh, but it's usually not a problem. It's just this one stair that you have to spiral up a bit. And um, then it's very important again, the uh, level ups that are coming up because now we're going to boost our character to really high strength, uh, not strength, but like level. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna level up okay. our vitality, our intelligence, our um, endurance, very important, to exact number of 36, which is enough to give us like all the movement setups that we need for later. We need one strength to wield our shield. Um, 50 intelligence which is the hard cap of maximum intelligence for our stuff, and the rest just goes to vitality. So now we are pretty damn strong. Um, after that, we just equip our new equipment, bow and shield and arrows, and make our way to the Gargoyles, the first boss fight of the run, or like second boss fight, I guess, if you count the Asylum Demon. Um, so how that works is we're just gonna run up here the stairs, spiral up the, the staircase, reach the top, and then um, we will be at the... Uh, how do you say it? the room is called hollow room which is like the most painful room in the entire game first of all though here we have a pretty nice kill setup now that we have magic you can see again the strength of magic because we can just like lock on from a distance and now kill everything in one hit with all the crazy int that we have so we don't need to worry really about the enemies being a bother and now comes the bow and the hollow room. <laughs> I do my old strat. So I, I how do both of these things work? The so the bow has one feature it's for blindfolded, which is amazing, which is the L1 first person mode, because this mode locks your camera in place. That means you can do rolls to the left and up and back without changing your camera angle. And this is the biggest form of movement that we're going to use. So here I just lure the hollows into this corner here turn around and then keep shooting and locking onto enemies until they all die. So here's one, two, three, four, five, and etc. I speed that up a bit because there are 10 hollows and we're gonna just kill all of them. We don't need to worry about our camera here because after I kill all of these guys, I can renormalize easily with the walls because it's such a narrow hallway. And then use the bow again to do normalized movement towards the gargoyle boss fight. This is the bow is really without the bow mechanic this game would not be possible blindfolded i not. tell you this bow is so important um uh, also quick reminder this is a very fast paced me. video i wanted to make it like this and if you want you. to see the full run with all the mistakes with all the like movement that i cut out and sped up then please go ahead it's also on my youtube channel in the stream section in the live stream section i stream this uh, whole run uh, life and there is the full vote available as well. I will link it in the description. If he doesn't respawn, now, that's huge. Gargoyles. Um, this is the first major boss in the run and the first very difficult boss. 
What we're gonna do okay, is we RNG cast Heavy Soul Arrow patterns, here before yeah, we enter the fight and then tap up right at the end of the casting time so we instantly get one shot out as soon as the cutscene ends. This hits him and the gargoyles get stunned from the Heavy Soul Arrows. And yeah. Unfortunately, the gargoyles have one attack which is bad for me, which is when they go into the air, because this is something I cannot dodge. All the other ones are okay, but I got lucky here, I could still lock onto him. This could have been much, much worse. So, first try Gargoyles got with him. tiny bit bad RNG, but very, very clean. Nice! First boss down. Um, um. Now, very, very interesting is how I um, find my way back. I want to really emphasize this part here, for, because this is blindfolded speedrunning in its purest form. So I do a setup here, and use again the bow to echolocate where the walls are. I know to my right side is the, the entrance somewhere, but I don't know my exact angle because I got hit, right? So what I do here is I listen for exact the corner where the wall ends and the arrow does not do a sound anymore, basically it flies infinitely. So like this, I can figure out my angle dynamically mid-run and um, based off of that, I can do a setup here, walk back into the room where I came from and then renormalize my camera angle with the ladder right here. Um, we're gonna use this technique quite often later on in the run and it's so powerful and I think so cool for blindfolded speedrunning. Um, I, I really love these kind of strats. So. Now all that's left to do is ring the bell, so we're gonna use a bit more bow movement. I, I call these bow rolls, um, like it's just that I most of the run that you will see from now on will be in this first person mode, so you will not see much of the like scenery, <laughs> but I hope it's okay. Anyways, clear, first yeah, bell so is done, the, the next one, one is Kelag, which is um, considerably harder than, than the gargoyles. But we have some new strats there as well. This is, by the way, the second run I finished. Hey, as you can see on my splits, the first skip, run skip time. Um, was a 4.17 in game time, which is the official timing method for Dark Souls speedruns. And this is my second attempt now on, on the run here. So what we need to do is we just walk back to Firelink Shrine with some normalized movement. It's The movement really um, is... In my opinion, not the most impressive part, it's just memorizing numbers for your steps and your rolls. So yes, I want to really take this there. video to explain more about the strats that I actually use. For example, this one here, Lawtrek. Um, we need to, on the way to Kila, kill this guy here because he has a very, very nice strats. ring. So my strat is I'd use like a camera setup here to perfectly shoot an arrow against his legs and then keep spamming soul arrows because you will see what happens. And by <laughs> um, you can cheese the kill here by shoot like my setup is to to use a heavy soul arrow and then keep shooting okay. soul arrows because that um, makes him very likely to dodge backwards and usually behind him is the edge so he just jumps down and yeah he drops the ring of favor and protection which is exactly what we wanted from him uh, this ring gives us more health more equip load more stamina it's like a very OP ring. Um, and now we enter Blight Town. Blight Town is... I, I don't even want to talk about it, honestly. Blight Town is a mess. So, there are these enemies here which mess up your positioning if you touch them. Uh, very often, as you can see also in this attempt, I, like, this, I, I want to reach the ladder at the end of this path. <laughs> But Why? this enemy here this just followed here? me because I got stuck on like some Why? very so tiny sweet. pixel. And I had to redo this section three times actually because they kept pushing me left and right and messed up my position. Um, I definitely, man. if I want to attempt oh, this again, it will reroute this sub part. It's, it's so horrible. And since the enemy hit again. us, we are also poisoned now, which is not good. Our health is slowly going down, as you can see. Um, but I still managed to somehow find this ladder here with a basically improvise the backup no, and this is exactly where i need to be and from the ladder i can normalize again with the recenter the camera button so now another glitch that i need to talk about um by equipping very specific equipment here mostly the demon's hammer um and removing our equipment we can have a very specific amount of equip load combined with my stamina and that allows me to do meme rolls 
So I just roll mid-air to mitigate fall damage, and I can basically roll down extremely big heights, which would usually kill me, as you can see here, but land perfectly on the in invisibility, like the iframes, which in which you cannot get damaged from the dodge roll. In these iframes, I land exactly on the floor on the bottom. Like, it's, it's pretty precise and you need to set up for this, otherwise you will just die. But I found a pretty nice position here and it works, as you can see. I'm all the way down to Blight Town now with a few rolls. And that is a pretty cool glitch that we're gonna utilize one more time later on in the run. But yeah, um, we are down here in Blight Town now. I am very low on health items at this point, but Kelak usually doesn't need much. So here we just run up until we get stuck at these roots. Why I wanted to show this Not is um, that there are these enemies with the big boulders and we need to really run outside of this whole arena here to not get targeted by them because they will throw stones at you and it will not be a fun time. Now, Kelag. There's lots to talk about uh, with Kelag. First of all, um, this is the first boss where I can take really big damage. So what I do is I duplicate, in the same way I dupe the souls, I duplicate humanity. So I use 99 humanities, as you can see in the top left, um, because that increases yes, your I'm defense. Man. And this fight is also why I upgraded my armor to plus 3. Now, we don't kill Kelag the normal way. We use a a cheese, <laughs> a stun lock, but it's pretty inconsistent, that's the problem. So what I do here is I count some movement all the way to this particular spot here, right here. And now I wait for Kelag to come close to me. I will listen for her footsteps, they get louder based on the like distance. And then I go to this corner here when she's there to bait her. Because what we want is that she follows us to this corner and here she does exactly the wrong attack. This is the exact attack we don't want to see. So I'm gonna re-attempt this here. And then turn around and here she followed us, right? Into the corner. And from this corner, with the right positioning, we can uh, stun lock her by using heavy soul arrows. And you can see I'm hitting like exactly her hand. Because my character is a bit elevated on the corner. And her hand counts as a headshot. So headshots stun her, do more damage, and with that I can finish her in like eight heavy soul arrows. Yes. And that was a perfect, perfect stunlock. Oh my it god. It took me, I think, I think, three or four attempts to I get her to actually spell, run towards the corner because my last the problem with this strat is the further away she is from you, I the more likely she is to do the lava attack, you. which I need to instantly <laughs> quit out and just retry. <laughs> And then we just do some movement uh, to get to the bell, ring it, and we are good. The, the good thing with this stunlock strat is also oh that God, we know where we are in the arena, so we can very fast and easily find the bell afterwards. Now, from oh Kelag on, we have rang both bells, which means we can now go to the fun part of the run, which is Sense Fortress and then Anolondo. <laughs> this run is really like a... Uh, has a very fun difficulty curve because it starts difficult and with every single split it just gets more and more difficult. <laughs> like, there is no rest. Every single split is harder than the previous one. Um, so yeah, we're gonna run back to this parish bonfire here. Um, sit down and then dark sign to just renormalize our camera. And Sense Fortress is a very interesting part of the run because you're gonna see this angle right here that we have from the bonfire, right? This is a perfect angle. And we're gonna carry this perfect angle all the way through the next to the next bonfire. We're gonna not do any single movement that changes our angle besides with the bow. First of all, though, we need this soul here, soul of a brave warrior, to um, get a bit stronger still for Sense Fortress because we are not quite strong enough yet. Nice. So I just grab the soul, go back, dupe it again 999 times and the souls also get stronger Everybody right so we get even Go more on. souls from them so um we're gonna dupe it here i believe it gives us like yeah five million souls <laughs> which we pump into and vitality then and then very strength. important nice. dexterity many like would ask right. like why you right. use a magic build right yeah. why do you need dexterity and we need it for two reasons First of all, dexterity upgrades 30. from, I believe, 30 to 45 increase your casting spell of uh, magic, 
which many don't know. But uh, the other part is it makes our longbow stronger and we're gonna actually kill one enemy in Sense Fortress with the bow because we cannot otherwise. So Sense Fortress, as I said, we have always the same angle here and we cannot do any movements beside walking up if we don't have the bow equipped. Um, now this first enemy here is an absolute troll. My strat for it is I beat count here to the left a few steps and then hit the enemy. You can hear a very faint sound if you hit him. There is much. There and is then much. you basically just wait because this guy is a bit strange if you're far away. You can see he's getting hit there and then just walks down. <laughs> and Did usually he him? either gets knocked down by the traps or just walks down himself. Um, and then what I use is I use a very precise combination of rolls here, as you can see, very tight to the traps. And those swings, they actually make sounds like whoosh, whoosh whoosh so i can hear on which cycle they are at um which is very fortunate because otherwise this hell would be even more of a hell than uh it is already and i'm just gonna do some movement always with the same camera angle here until now where we can roll against a wall a buffered roll against the wall <laughs> changes to exactly 90 degrees so it still carries our perfect angle but it's very important that you need to roll directly into a roll and now this is the reason why we upgraded the bow and why we also leveled dexterity early. This enemy here is too far away and our magic cannot really reach without a lock on. As well as the traps in the middle uh, eat the magic. So with the upgraded bow and the dex we can kill this guy okay. with like 4 headshots here with a beat counted uh, setup. And then the path is clear. Now we come up to... A little bit of a spoiler, but the, one of the biggest mistakes of the run. <laughs> so you can see right here, I'm, I'm doing my thing, I'm just doing my rolls. And here I miscount one roll. I did here, I rolled up and get hit. But I had to roll one to the right to dodge huh? this arrow. And look at the How time now. Me? I was like on the it's side. It's one eleven, and this mistake, this one roll, cost me around 15 minutes. That is blindfolded speedrunning for you. Yeah, like, you, you, you literally forget one number or do one wrong roll will, and you lose so the much time. The um, there's a couple of more of these time losses later on, but this is a major one. So, we just walked back here the same way and now we use a very clever setup to headshot this guy, walk into him, because that's a... Like, the headshot gives you a perfect uh, distance for him to break the wall and then we're going to roll six times to the right to be exactly in front of Logan, which is the next goal that we have to um, achieve here. So Logan is a key character for my blindfolded speedrun because he, if freed, returns to Firelink Shrine and then sells spells. And we need those spells for the late game bosses. Um, and conveniently, there's also a soul of a hero here, which gives a lot of souls. And you can probably see where this is going with the 90, 999 duplication glitch. So I just ran back to Firelink Shrine quickly, um, did the same movement basically as we went to Law Trek first time. And then here uh, is Logan. So we confirm a position by talking to him and then dupe the hero soul 999 times, which gives us like incredible amounts of souls. I think if, like 7 million, 8 million, I'm not quite sure. But, um, okay, 10 million. <laughs> so with that, we can purchase um, great heavy soul arrows, homing soul mass, and the soul spear. These three spells are really, really so important to my run that I have to, that I really take this whole detour. And now after Kelag, we got a homeward bone, which I use now to keep the souls that I used at uh, Logan to level up more. What we What we leveled up is... Um, we increased our vitality to maximum 99. Uh, we got some more attunement, so we have now four different spells. Here I test the how, like if I if I ma menu it correctly, because I can hear based on how long the spell sound is which spell I equipped. So now we have equipped homing uh, missiles, great great heavy soul arrow, soul spear, and heavy soul arrow. Um, so now I just walked all the way back with the same movement to where we break, broke the wall to Logan. And now we're going to do the rest of Sense Fortress. Here we bait this guy, let him hit, and then continue our way with rolls. 
you need to be faster because this ball is coming back. So I just like roll very very quickly here and then enter the the um, fog gate, quit out because there's like three enemies running after me. Same deal as here. We need to do very very fast movement here because behind this wall an enemy aggroed us. And now I cast homing soul uh, arrows and then mash the soul spear to kill this guy without changing my angle. And you can probably guess why the homing soul mass is so important. It allows you to kill enemies without locking on and without being close to them. And we can combine the homing soul mass together with the bow movement. And this is very, 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 very strong in blindfold and very important later in the run. So now the rest of Sense Fortress is really just counted rolls everywhere with the same camera angle. So you cannot even see much what is going on because I keep facing one direction. Here I turn against a wall again, 90 degrees turn to the left. Uh, mostly because of the next setup to kill an enemy. Uh, first of all, we need to pass uh, one kind of last bridge with these uh, swings. Again, I listen for the whoosh sound and then... Uh, roll to the right four times and then one up one right and here I need to quit out very quickly I, I go to the corner to normalized position quit out because there's an enemy behind us and now you can see what I said earlier I cast homing soul mass um, do my bow setup and then just roll up and then confirms to kill this enemy here just because like yeah I set it up like that without changing my angle, without having even the, the, the staff equipped, because it's a like lingering spell. Now, one of my most favorite uh, strats here. After reaching this corner, I use the bow actually for another technique, which is turning around in place with the camera facing the same way. So I turned 180 degrees without changing the camera. And now what I do is quit out. Because a quit out, uh, readjusts your camera also to face perfectly forward where your character faces. And now I just hold up and press B. And look at that. Beautiful strat right here. Perfect. <laughs> so I lapped it out in a way that I can just literally quit out there and hold up. And it will pass all the traps. So we are close to done with Sense Fortress, at least with the first checkpoint. It's a very long section. Any mistake means lots of time loss because you have to redo everything. So here, last few rolls that we need to do. And then here is the hidden bonfire. Uh, we just drop down here and finally we did it. No more, no more losing runs to Sense Fortress. <laughs> so we, we um, hit the bonfire now. But before we continue actually to, to do the run, we need to pick up one more item, which is maybe you would not expect. And for that item, we're going to do exactly the same glitch again that we used in Blighton, which is the meme rolls. So I again change my equipment here to have a perfect uh, equip load, which is the great hammer and no armor, together with 36 um, endurance. And then I just roll down here, which negates perfectly my fall damage. And here on the left side is a ring, a hidden ring. The ring of slumbering dragon crest or something. I don't know the name. Anyways, the ring conceals your footsteps. Slumbering dragon crest ring, yeah. Um, after that, I just kill myself I quickly. I unfortunately survived the fall here, uh, but yeah. So this ring will be important in Arnold Londo. I will come to that later. So we just now picked it up to kind of prep. So after that, we just continue running through uh, Sense Fortress. There's one more soul I pick up here on the way. Soul of a Brave Warrior, which we'll, we will just dupe, just why not? We have enough levels to finish the game at this point, but we can get a tiny bit more intelligence to do a tiny bit more damage later on. Here, very cool strat as well. I wait for the for the ball throwers to de-aggro me. I wait there for like around a minute and then they stop throwing. So I can go over this bridge without needing to worry about the cycle of these guys throwing their fireballs. Um, then we just keep rolling, keep rolling. <laughs> it's really just a lot of memorized roll counts. And then one strat I really like is here. I cast homing soul mass, uh, do the bow movement, and then count rolls of this tiny bridge. This guy misses. 
I recharge my stamina, hold left here for a very specific count of footsteps, and while rolling up, the enemy dies. It's like everything at once uh, happens, but it's it's a super nice strat. And we are already in the next boss fight now, which is Iron Golem. Uh, Iron Golem is one of the easiest boss fights because it's scripted. We always do the same thing. Five rolls up, he will miss an attack here. I cast Homing Soul Mass, switch to Soul Spare, the strongest spell by the way. Uh, count his footsteps, hit him once, twice, three, four times, and then roll back twice, which I messed up. <laughs> uh -oh. uh, I, I accidentally s s casted another spell. So here, this is like full on improvised now. I just, he grabbed me as well, which is very unfortunate because that changes my camera and my lock on gets lost. So I keep s casting spells now without being locked on, which is a bit of a shame. But uh, usually this fight is easy, <laughs> usually, but in blindfolded, nothing is easy. So maybe I should take my word back. Anyways, I managed to back it up um, by mashing lock on and casting spells. This is like the panic move. If you if you get lost in your lock on, just mash lock on because every second you will still like get the spell onto him at least. And then because my position now is wrong, I renormalize here in this corner with a backup strat and like going up left into this corner here guarantees that I will still face the the warp. And thankfully, he didn't push me far enough, yes. and we reach Arnolondo, finally. Oh, beautiful city, and the okay. even um, worse part than Sense Fortress in Blindfolded. So, Arnolondo, um, we need to go first to the bonfire, which is just really a long run. We just count footsteps all the time here. Um, then do, like, a roll setup to get further into the into the houses. And then keep running again, keep running, keep rolling, keep running. It's it's the same old thing in terms of movement. Um, after we reach the bonfire here, we need to... We, we will dupe the final time the souls for a level up. Um, or actually... No, we don't. I actually think I'd done it before. But anyways... Um, Arno Londo, now comes the rafter part. Um, before we go to the rafters, there's one more thing we need to do. Here, a very cool setup where I um, run just straight down from a dark sign until I reach the elevator here, quit out, and during the run, equip the bow with the arrows. So as soon as I spawn on, the elevator is considered unstable ground, so it puts me on top. I can do a roll and then count exactly for a specific amount of time to skip the elevator that goes down. Like, I, there's a little ledge, you cannot see it because I do this weird blindfolded movement, but this is like a pretty precise trick that speedrunners do in visual runs. And I'm pretty cool, I find it pretty cool that I found a setup for this for blindfolded. Now we need to kill this gargoyle and look at the hitbox. I miss all my soul mass, I miss my soul spear, miss my soul spear, ah. miss my soul spear. <laughs> I whiffed all my soul spears, dude. And miss again. <laughs> this is incredible. <laughs> yeah, this guy has the this worst guy. hitbox ever. And then I cast another soul mass and finally it hit. <laughs> but my lock on got lost. This is just a mess. We basically just want to kill this guy so that he doesn't annoy us later on on the way. So as long as he dies, it's fine. And then I'm anyways gonna dark sign and redo the whole movement. But I find it so ridiculous. This game is just so drank in so many ways. Um, but yeah, there's also one more part that I need to talk about, which is Gargoyle RNG. Because killing these guys can give you random items into the inventory. They can drop a helmet, a shield, or a weapon. Imagine or like a combination of any of, of these. Soul, yes, <laughs> um, so I do like this whole, anim this whole way back here. I'll talk more about the RNG later. It's not really a problem for me in the run because I have strats to figure out how many items I have and stuff, but yeah. Let's rather talk about rafters, because this is one of the hardest movement parts in the run. Um, yeah, rafters are this tiny walkway on the ceiling here, which you might remember from your casual Dark Souls playthrough, 
And as you can imagine, they will not be fun blindfolded. First of all, we need to kill these two guardians here. We use homing soul mass again, every single one whiffed. So I need to recast here, hope that he doesn't hit me and change my angle. Recast soul mass for the second one now, um, and then lure him. These guys have two attacks, by the way, either throwing a throw knife like this, which I can dodge because it makes a very distinct sound, or they can melee and walk towards you. And that's what you want, because then my soul mass hits. Um, then I just renormalize on the ladder here, um, which is done by walking down into the wall and then do a roll setup. And ladders, yeah, you can renormalize your angle on ladders because you can recenter the camera. You can listen with the punch if you're actually on it, because otherwise R1 would shoot an arrow, but now R1 did a punch. And now, oh my god, rafters. I'm actually quite proud because I made this section really consistent, but it's an incredibly precise section where you need to make everything correctly and very to the millimeter it needs to fit. So what we're going to use is a combination of stuff punches, um, bow rolls, and also a new technique, which is bow rolls combined with holding the arrow button. Because if you hold an arrow during the, the roll, it gives you a tiny bit less distance than a roll without arrow. So here I'm punching six times with the stuff to give myself just the right amount of distance, and then do three rolls up without arrow, one roll to the left. And you can see where this is going. This entire section will be routed out like this. But what do we do about the enemies? Now, the enemies we're gonna kill with soul mass, but they are too far away, so we're gonna see a really cool strat here. We, we go right into the right position, and now you will be able to see the rolls with arrow for the first time. We need three rolls with arrow, otherwise we fall down. And then we listen for the attack that this guy does. And we're gonna keep dodging his attack until he walks towards us. So throw, dodge, throw, dodge. And then he decides to come, and we we hear that, okay, he's not throwing anymore. We can just wait on the left side. He will come here, and the soul mask kills him. It's like a very, very clever setup, and we're gonna keep doing this whole rafter section the exact same way. Do very precise counts, very precise movement, lure the guys by um, rolling back and forth, and this guy didn't, for example, throw at all, which is very lucky. And then, like, wait for them to do the right attack and keep dodging every other attack. It's very, very scary because every single mistake, like this guy is throwing quite a bit, but yeah, no problem. And that was a first try rafters, which I've never done before in a run. Uh, first try is amazing. Uh, my first attempt of Dark Souls Blindfolded actually died at rafters because yes. I got stuck here for an hour. But yeah, this was first try really nice. And uh, now that we've lowered the bridge, we don't need to do this ever again. No. There is another gargoyle that we need to kill here. I hope that the hitbox is not as bad as the first one. But I remember that this one was fast. Yeah, all my soul mass hit and two great so great heavy soul arrows and he's dead. And there you can see I got all three items, which is so lucky or unlucky. Like for me it doesn't matter, but it's crazy to get all game, three man. items. <laughs> and yeah. After rafters, you would think it's over, but now comes an even worse part, which is the silver archers and the 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 archways, or however they called. So we run all the way back here, and um, we need to run past these two big knights. So I just walk up without bow, sprint, and then on a very precise timing, I hit the hit the bow button to aim, as well as roll to dodge their attacks. And I quit out here at the door, and now comes the ring into play that we collected at Sans Fortress. Um, this ring m gives you the ability to not produce sound, which is weird for blindfolded because we count footsteps all the time and then now we cannot hear them anymore. But with this ring here, it's we can skip the giants behind us. And basically, because we are behind them, they cannot see us. But whatever we would do, they would hear us still, because they are very close. But with this ring, after a quit out, we can basically roll past them without worrying about them. We just collected this ring literally for this one enemy here. We will never use it again. Um, so here, now, we, we skip the giants, basically, and now comes these... I also call them gargoyles. I don't know what they are. It's this weird 
creatures without flesh. They're very disgusting. Um, but we're gonna just roll past them and hope that they don't hit us here. Um, they are very likely to hit you here, actually, but with my setup, I, I found a way that even if they hit you, they kind of punch you onto this bridge. And now comes a pretty clever setup again, because we need to now get rid of the other enemies. Quickly de-equipping the ring that I with the sound so I can actually hear my movement again. So what we do here is we use again the soul mass and bait one enemy each time. So I'm rolling to the right um, until I hear the enemies getting closer because I don't know exactly how far away I am. And then when I think I'm close enough, keep rolling right, kill one of them and roll instantly back before getting hit. Um, Getting hit is very problematic in all of this section here because this is very precise later on with the position that we need. And any hit could change your angle a tiny bit, even if you are in the bow position. So what I do now is I turn around 180 degrees again with the bow strat and then repeat the same thing for the other gargoyle that is on the other side. Um, because otherwise you would not be able to... Soul mass only hits enemies that are like in front of you. So we kind of need to work with that. There you go, and the gargoyle is dead. And now to the worst part of the run, really. I, I, I hate this section so much that I actually decided to not run this category anymore. Uh, I will, for the next run that I do, actually um, do a little detour and get an item that lets me skip this whole part. Completely fair. Because I, I had enough, I, pillar, but, yeah. but hey, that, that's personal story here. <laughs> I lost multiple times. I did like three or four attempts where I lost an hour each time for this stupid two enemies here. Anyways, sorry, I'm getting personal. Um, yeah, the archers. So right here, look, did you see the tiny ledge? I did not get up that tiny ledge with the roll. And that lost me again in this attempt i think 40 minutes or something this ledge here um i cut out the failed attempts so this is already like the third try or so but we lost so much time because this ledge did not let me up there i don't know why but you can see because Please. we didn't get up i just <laughs> I fell down this. instead of doing the setup that i need to like at this point, I didn't know what I'd do with my strat, so I just like tried to back it up, walk down a bit, because I knew it's definitely this stupid ledge. I tapped down a bit and then continued my setup from here, um, which is roll up, roll twice left, go a tiny bit around this wall, and then keep going here for the archers. And then I count footsteps and prep a quid out, because if you keep holding left, I hold like lots of buttons at the same time, count the footsteps and at 17, quit out. Boom. Exactly too late because I got unlucky and the guy hit me. So I just literally RNG it right here. This has nothing to do with any strat anymore. You can see this is a mess. I just like... The strat is to equip Soul Spear and kill this guy, which I did very, very fortunately. But I got hit like three times and that I did not fall down is a miracle. I honestly don't know how I got past this section. Um, but yeah, we are safe. Um, as soon as you kill this guy and hold up left, you will eventually reach this corner here. You will hear the fall down, and from here there's a fork gate and the next bonfire is right here. Um, but yeah, I lost lots of time because I couldn't get up that ledge. I need to... I, I will, for the next runs, skip this part. There is a way. If you collect... Basically, if you collect um, Spook, or however that spell is called in Dark Souls 1, which oh. cancels fall damage, you can do a big skip to skip this whole archer part. And that's what we're gonna do next time, so look forward to that. Um, but yeah, here's the next bonfire. And finally, we are done with archers. You can see also on my splits, last run it took one hour, 10 minutes. <laughs> this run, it only took 20 minutes, so that's a big improvement. It was a half hour time save on my, <laughs> compared to my first completion of this game. But yeah, it still lost lots of time because of that ledge. Now, the next thing we do is um, go to the basement here and actually collect um, Harvel's armor. For that, we need to kill one silver knight that is in the way. We do that with homing soul mass as well as soul spears. Turn the camera here, lock on, and then cast soul spears. I was at the wrong spell. I don't realize what, do what is going on, but it still worked. 
and the angle is still good. I just need to notch myself into this doorway here. Um, then do a setup with like backstabs and rolls to get to this door. And then it's just more rolls to get to Havel's basement chests. And yeah, this is all just movement. So Havel's armor is important because it gives you poise. For those who don't know what that is, um, the heavier armor you wear, the more hits you can withstand without your character basically getting like a tumble animation. And this is very important for me and my run because I can cast spells and usually if they hit me, my spell gets disrupted. But if I have high poise, I can keep continuing the spell even if I get hit once or twice before I get like stumbled. Um, but more to that later. First of all, upcoming is the stair skip, which we're going to do blindfolded. And I have to say, I'm pretty consistent with it, with my strat. We do like a full setup from the bonfire, do back steps, and then count 3.5 steps, jump, and easy win. I got this like three times in a row in this, I think. Like it, it's, pretty, it's pretty consistent, which is nice. From here on, the next thing we're going to do is the good old Ornstein and Smo. Um, ah, yeah. <laughs> it will be a fun section to talk about. But yeah, it's just more movement here. We're going to prep the same way as we did for Kelag for this fight. We're going to dupe humanity. Uh, we still have... We have after, after Kelag and after um, Gargoyles, we've got a twin humanity. So I can just dupe them without using my normal one. And now, Ornstein and Smo, but with a twist, I forgot to put on Havel's armor. <laughs> and you will see what happens, what I mean with poise. So here, I hit Ornstein, he hits me, I get disrupted with the spell. I cannot spell, you, you can see exactly what I mean. Like. I just cannot spell because I keep getting hit by like tiny attacks and I keep getting hit, keep getting hit, keep getting hit. I cannot spell. And then I want I to heal, spells, but I cannot even heal because I keep getting hit and get poised. Again, keep getting hit. And that is the pain of having no poise and I my do dumb I don't know what happened. Brain. There was no soul spear, there was no heavy uh, arrow. Forgot to put on Harvest armor for the entire run. So I collected it and never equipped it. Um, so we, we, I had to run back to Ornstein, I think, three times. Uh, do this whole thing just to get absolutely whacked by them. And now look at this attempt. Look how my attacks whiff. Every single attack. Absolutely, perfectly strafing. This is so crazy. Look at this fight here. <laughs> Besides me getting my, getting my cheeks whooped a bit. Now, Smo tanks all the hits because Ornstein walks behind him. It's incredible, incredibly bad RNG. We, can, we, we are not allowed to kill Smo because we basically cannot kill the big version of Ornstein. It's too strong for us. So we need to kill Ornstein first. And yeah, it's not happening. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was the biggest mistake in the run that I forgot to wear this armor. And then on the third attempt, I got lucky. Also, my cat went into my lap. I don't know if you noticed. But yeah, yeah, third attempt. I hit all my soul mass. I hit the great heavy soul arrow and stun him, which gives lots of damage. You see, he already is past, um, past halfway. That stun before he attacked me was very, very important. Here, the same thing. He keeps hitting me, but after my spell. And then that was a very clean kill. Yeah. You see, was it that hard? And now Smau works similarly we cast heavy soul mass just to know when he's close to know when we need to lock on and then we run into him very important we keep running straight into him shoot all our soul spears because that's the most damage we can get and then keep shooting heavy soul arrows uh, i switch to the wrong spell here you can see i'm at great heavy soul arrows which will be very confusing in a second but you can see he would be dead Besides that, I forgot that I have the wrong spell, and I try to keep spelling here, what's but happening? I cannot, and I don't know what's going on. And he is whacking me really hard. He has like one hit left. Um, but yeah, why it's important to keep running into Smo is um, his ginormous weapon eats magic. So you need to cast your spells 
uh, like underneath the weapon so they don't get so eaten. Uh, and here you can see I cannot kill him and I have like one HP left. He dead. casts his hammer, but I was faster and it was like such a such a dramatic ending to this fight. Oh, yeah, but that's how we killed Ornstein and Small without Havel's armor. It's a world first. I've never done that before. So again, very interesting renormalization technique. The door. We have we find the door with the arrows because the door makes the only wooden sound in this entire room. And then we see we search for the exact corner where the door ends and the wall starts. Roll in there and then uh, set up an angle, turn around, and then set up another position with the bow, which is to the left side, um, basically where the pillars end and like the hallway starts and like this we can figure out a very precise angle here to find the elevator from ornstein without actually having to dark sign and do this whole run up again so very very cool renormalization strat again similar to the gargoyle one and after that we just find a bonfire and gg well played now um there is only one little part left of the run we are very close to done uh, we open the door, kill the lady here. Killing her is faster than talking to her. I'm sorry for all her fans. Uh, but it's a speedrun after all. Rest in peace. She gives us the Lord Vessel, which um, allows us to warp. So we warp back out of Andalondo to Firelink Shrine, finally. And from here, since we already have used the wrong warp before in the run, if you, if you remember, now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to walk down here to the Firelink Altar, place the Lord Vessel, and um, from here on, we can use the Dark Sign and Wrong Warp, again with the same technique. Frame advancing to the last four frames of the, of the um, loading zone, then close the game, reopen the game, and magically, where will we end up? We are in the kiln of the first flame. So you can skip the big door, which requires you to collect all the four big boss souls. Like that's the biggest skip of the game right here. Um, so we are now on the way to the final boss, which is again, lots of walking because this is a ginormous area. I speed things up here. We use a very conveniently randomly found setup. If you roll with this particular angle, you just have to hold up all the way until you fall down here and then keep holding up, but eventually hit the bow so you don't change your angle because this enemy right here can hit you. So I keep starting to roll here and you renormalize with the hill of ash. And what I listen for here is the footsteps change right here to stone from like ash to stone. And that's the cue when I need to prep Surely my quit out my because the, the quit out puts you to the last stable position which is right at the edge and from here i know where to go i have my angle i have my setups so one more quit out right here i prep it again beforehand and then walk down the edge instantly quit out so we renormalize on the edge of the of the bridge and then one final renormalization strat with the bow as you can see, the bow is the MVP in blindfolded speedrunning. The bow is so good. I, I love this weapon so much. Um, so we, we echolocate this pillar here and echolocate the very right side of it and then keep rolling towards it because that gives us the perfect angle to cross this bridge. Um, then we roll past that pillar here and need to cross one knight. And this knight can push you down super easily. It's very random. Uh, I fell down here quite a few times. I cut out these attempts. Uh, so this is one that worked. But this guy can just like hit you or push you and then you fall down the bridge. It's pretty sad. But after you okay. um, get past here, we quit out to de-aggro him. And then it's one last final big sprint to the final boss door. Um, one fun fact to this sprint here. If you quit out anywhere behind that, that knight, um, the second Black Knight here at the very end despawns for whatever reason, so we don't need to worry about him. Um, and now, if you thought the Havel's mistake was bad, well, look at what I do now. <laughs> so, I backstab, and now I want to dupe humanity again, the same way I did. But we don't have double humanity anymore, so I drop, I drop 
all but one humanity so I can pick them up later and uh, dupe that. I have 99 and then I want to pick up my humanity but ah! I had a wrong angle and I oh. end accidentally entered the, the boss fight which oh, no. means I have no humanity anymore. I dropped my humanity. Which means that I need to first try this fight. Which, if you have seen what happened with Ornstein and my Harvest Armor, is unlikely. So yeah, we got a pretty good start, but then because we have no poise, we, we lack the armor, I cannot spell, he keeps hitting me, and then we get the grab, which is the worst attack you can do. I'm dead. Um, I'm it dead. delocks you from the enemy, it How does lots of I damage, have... um, it's the worst. And then uh, I try to fix this, I try to heal, but it's too late, and then I die. No. So, very unfortunate. Um, I run back all the way. It, it oh took like 15 minutes, but then... I don't have Harvest Armor! That's why Ornstein was so hard! Yup, I realized my mistake in the second attempt in Gwyn at the very end of the run. <laughs> and yeah, again, very close fight, but still not enough. Whoa. I, 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 I realized so though, stupid. and with that means we do one final run back. Again, lost lots of time at the Gwyn split. I think more than like half hour actually. We lost lots of time. But for the final fight, I actually equipped the Havel's armor. This is how I should look like since Arno Londo. <laughs> and enter it and then let's watch this beautiful fight, how it goes. Cast Soul Mass, run up with the shield. Which leaves you exactly enough stamina to instantly counter him with soul spears. And if you keep running into him and mash the soul spears, he cannot dodge. Then, unfortunately, he grabs me. He grabs me instantly. Which is the worst. Instantly, uh, but dude. The strat after, after the shit, soul man. spears is basically cast soul mass and cast a heavy great soul arrow. Because he will try to dodge uh, the great heavy soul arrow, but usually cannot dodge both. Here he, do he dodges pretty well. But it's a pretty consistent strat. And if both hit, he gets stumbled. So you can like basically stun lock him as well, as you can see. And here I decided to heal. I could have gone for another uh, attack rather and he would be dead. But I don't know. I'm blindfolded. I don't know how much health he has. So it's better to be safe. And then you can see that poise. He hits me two, three times and I can still cast. It's so powerful. And there it is. The final boss is yes! down. Dark Souls is beaten. <laughs> Okay. There's one last thing to do. We need to uh, Dude, dark sign after the, the boss victory <laughs> screen here. Boom. Now we dark sign to normalize our position because we don't know where we are in the uh, arena. And it, hold up. There is the bonfire which activates the final cutscene. And GG, well played. This is blindfolded. Dark Souls remastered any percent in 3 hours, 33 uh. minutes. 34 no, minutes it was in game still time. 40 minutes PB. A PB by 40 minutes still with still oh, many many no. mistakes. So I very much believe if I now reroute it this and game, optimize man. a bit more, this the next game. round will be a sub like three hour uh, real so time fast. and probably a sub oh. like 2.30 in game yes, time. I can save easily like a whole hour I think. Mouse, yeah. So yeah, that's the next goal. Uh, we're gonna optimize have a new route and then we're gonna do this again hope you look forward to that but yeah thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed this little explanation video um as i said i will leave a link in the description with the whole run if you want to see the full movement and all the failures Dude, as well Harvest armor and are you um, kidding me? yeah big shout outs as always to my patrons uh bodis bob farrell ben litz zeke's many king roops and andrew um, all the other ones as uh, well. I really appreciate the died. support. This run has been really there. rough, honestly. The grind was really painful so far. I hope the runs will be better soon. And thank you for yeah, watching. We... See you next time First with more runs. And take care. So, Bye-bye.